welcome uh, everyone to another lecture uh, which is about rectum and anal canal uh, well indeed uh, I don't know if we can say that the rectum or the lecture of the rectum uh, should be like considered part from the GI uh, system or should be explained in the uh, urogenital system but anyway the uh, rectum is the pelvic part you see here here is the pelvis and the rectum is the pelvic part of the digestive tract so i prefer to explain it uh, uh, in the gi uh, system uh, so it doesn't matter but uh, anyway this is the rectum guys which is a continuation here of the sigmoid colon you know we have uh, ascending colon transverse descending and sigmoid colon and from sigmoid colon the distal continuation is the rectum where is that it's exactly at the level of the sacral vertebra number three this is the sacrum look at this uh, look at the care of the sacrum anyway this is the s1 s2 s3 4 and 5 but anyway at the level of s3 here is the connection between the sigmoid colon and the rectum we call it recto sigmoid junction so this is the junction between sigmoid and rectum recto sigmoid junction which is at the level of s3 vertebra that means we have to know where is what's the uh, where's the uh, let us say the rectum uh, started and where is the end of the uh, rectum so as i mentioned the rectum simply started in the front of the third sacral vertebra here and it continues down until like say this is the coccyx that means this is the tip of the coccyx but it continues just in the front of the uh, coccyx a little bit below about one inch below the tip of the coccyx that means it started at the level of sacral vertebra number three and it ends in the front and a little bit below the um, tip of the coccyx about one inch below on the front of the tip of the coccyx now let me give you just a couple of things about the now you know where is the rectum its continuation of what and uh, you know where it started and where it ends right so the it started you know as a continuation of the sigmoid and it ends at this level one inch below the tip of the coccyx and it continues at as anal canal this is about one one and a half inch right so you know uh, maybe you have to know that the rectum is not completely covered by peritoneum so we can consider it like um, it's not totally but it's a kind of part of it is a kind of retroperitoneal uh, uh, structure let me show you here this is the sigmoid colon and this is the peritoneum look at the peritoneum oh yeah look at here this is the rectum we can divide it let us say uh, to three parts this is the sacrum right and this is the coccyx anyway so at the level of uh, uh, s3 let us um, uh, say uh, this point here the uh, this is the continuation of the sigmoid and the rectum this is the rectus sigmoid junction at this point here is start the um what we call it, the rectum so this is one part and uh this is what let us say this is one third and this is the second third and this is the third part of the rectum that means we can divide it into three parts indeed why I'm talk about this because I'm trying to show you the relation of the rectum to the peritoneum so in the upper third as you see here in the upper third it's covered from the front and laterally as you see here but it's reflected here and on the other side that means the upper third of the rectum is covered like uh, completely by peritoneum except the posterior part right that means it's not covered by peritoneum totally just the front and lateral when you go to the middle one third of the rectum you would see that it's the peritoneum just uh, covers the front of the rectum this is uh just uh, to make sure that you know what i'm talking about this is a uh, sagittal section sagittal section from the pelvis anyway so in the middle third the peritoneum just covers the 
front of the rectum but then it reflected on the urinary urinary bladder this is the urinary um, bladder that means the uh, if you look at it here again the peritoneum is not continue all the way down it's reflected at this point that means the lower one third of the rectum is devoid of peritoneum there is no peritoneum covering the lower one third of the uh, rectum let me show you here here is again what i talked about about the peritoneum covering the rectum so again this is a frontal view of the um rectum here is if you look at the this is the um uh, sigmoid and this is the start of the uh, rectum look at the upper one third of the uh, rectum which is in which the peritoneum covers the front and the lateral of the um, rectum but not posteriorly right but the middle one third it's just the peritoneum shifted a little bit to the front so the middle one third of the peritoneum just the middle, middle one third of the rectum just covered from the front by peritoneum look at it here it's just from the front so even it's not going to the back deep laterally right but that means here is the terminal end of the peritoneum because i mentioned it's reflected um, in the uh, pace of the urinal bladder that means the lower one third of the rectum has no peritoneum right there is no peritoneum here is again if you take a coronal section from the uh, rectum you see here is the uh, peritoneum my friends in the upper third and middle one third and it's reflected there you see and i think you can notice the lower part of the peritoneum the lower part of the rectum has no peritoneum uh okay general or couple of structure a couple of um, notes uh, about the um, rectum again this is the coronal section of the rectum my friends and um, you would see that the this is the rectum let me show you like here there is the rectum right so the uh, rectum piercing the pelvic diaphragm where is the pelvic diaphragm this is the pelvic diaphragm that's represented by a muscle known as levator and eye muscle so this is the levator and eye muscle that hang down and it forms the what we call it the um, uh, pelvic diaphragm and now the rectum once it passes from this point it becomes like continuous with the anal canal now again back to the rectum yes this is the rectum and the lower part of the rectum is like dilated in which it's known as rectum ampulla or ampulla of rectum ampulla it means ampulla is something like dilated you know the ampulla of a drug like this so it's dilated so dilated part of any structure like we call it uh, uh, ampulla so this is the ampulla of the uh, rectum now back although uh, it would be really uh, would be covered like extensively in the uh, urogenital system but i would like to show you here is the levator and eye muscle that forms the pelvic diaphragm levator and eye muscle is like three parts the most medial part is known as puporectalis this is the puporectalis that makes like a u-shape we'll talk about it like u-shape or sling around the junction between the rectum and anal canal at this point in which this is sling or u-shape it creates a kind of um uh, what we call it anal rectal flexure anal rectal flexure there is a flexure uh will show you where is it now in this figure you see my friends as we talk about the general features of the rectum again this is the sigmoid colon look at the sigmoid colon back again um you know the features uh, of the large intestine um uh, include the existence of tenaculi as you see here also fatty what we call it epipleuic uh, appendices or omental appendices um like um it's a projection of uh peritoneal sac filled with fat um the plus look at the hostria here 
the circulation. So these three features, when you uh, see them, you will say, yes, these are large intestine. Now, you know, again, this is the sigmoid colon, and this is the junction of the sigmoid colon with the rectum. That means, uh, what I want to say that at the rectum, at the beginning of the rectum, or how can you tell that, yes, this is the terminal end of the uh, sigmoid colon and the start of the rectum by this appearing of those um, uh, uh, features. That means the tina coli, look at the tina coli, it becomes like um, it disappeared and uh, it kind of spread like around the rectum to form the um, uh, muscular coat, the outer longitudinal muscular coat, right? This is tina coli and there is a disappear or discontinuation of the omental appendices or epiploic appendices. There is no omental appendices uh, uh, or epiploic appendices in the rectum. That means there is no tina coli, there is no epiploic or omental appendices, and there is no circulation. We don't have these things here, right, in the uh, rectum. That means these are features of the rectum. Now, again, this is sigmoid colon. Look at the junction. The start the junction between the uh, sigmoid colon and the rectum for what we call it rectosigmoid junction. Look at the tina coli. It starts to disappear, so it's not a band as you see here. Instead, the three bands of tina coli that uh, explained in a previous lecture, now they start to spread as you see here to form like the outer fibrous coat as you see here right so this is the outer fibrous muscular coat and if you remove it you will see internally you have inner circular layer right that means you have outer longitudinal and you know it comes from here and inner circular layer of smooth muscle now as i mentioned before two uh, slides about the pupil um, uh, rectalis and the um, the the anorectal flexure. That means before jumping to the anorectal flexure. Um, so I would like to talk in general about all flexures of the rectum. So in this figure, my friends, you are looking to the uh, rectum from laterally. This is a kind of sagittal or parasagittal section of the uh, pelvis, right? So when you look to the um, uh, pelvis laterally, you would see the rectum in this shape, which is like a shape. Look at the sacrum. Look at the sacrum. Look at the curve of the sacrum. Look at the rectum that follows the um, uh, curve of the sacrum. That means because of the existence of the um, uh, rectum in the front of the uh, curve of the sacrum, that means you, when you look to the rectum laterally, you get the anterior posterior flexures. That means you have a flexures, but they are anterior posterior flexures. That means when you look at it laterally, look, this is the sacral flexure this is the sacral flexure so the sacral flexure of the rectum it follows the curve of the sacrum and coccyx as you see here and indeed it's concave anteriorly look at the concavity here so it's concave anteriorly so this is what we call it the sacral flexure okay now let me change the color and now you have another reflection, but in opposite direction, which is the anorectal flexion. This is the anorectal flexion in which it's about, look at the bending. It's like 80 degrees, right? It's about 80 degrees. So this is the anorectal flexion, or we call it perennial um, uh, flexion, in which uh, the junction of the rectum and the ankle are about 80 degrees, um, created by the pelvic diaphragm. You remember the pelvic diaphragm that I mentioned earlier, and the puborectalis, that's like you shape and pulls the um, uh, uh, the uh, area here between the rectum and anal canal creates a kind of anorectal flexure. And in this case, uh, look, this is the anorectal flexure. You can describe it from posterior anterior, but you can say, yes, it's concave 
posteriorly, right? Concave posterior, or you can say convex anteriorly. It's up to you. I don't care too much about it. The the most important is to know that the anterior posterior flexures. That means um, we have sacral and aeronectal flexures. But let us take a frontal um, uh, view of the rectum. Let us say you remove the genitalia and the stuff there and you look to the rectum from the front, anteriorly, and you take a cross section here, right? Coronal section as well, to see the inside of the rectum from the front. So uh, we have not anterior posterior flexures, we have lateral flexures. Although you look to the rectum anteriorly, but these flexures you see here are um, uh, these flexures are what we call it lateral flexures because the flexures like laterally. So you can see it when you view it anteriorly, and it created these flexures. Um, looking here, this is a kind of superior. Um, uh, superior one, inferior one, and this is intermediate one. Anyway, these flexures are created by uh, uh, three internal enfoldings. That means uh, a mucosa, mucosal folds that covered a thickening of smooth muscle here, circular smooth muscle. That means there is a smooth, circular smooth muscle here thickened here and covered by a mucosa, right? Covered by mucosa. These are, because they are transverse in direction, we call them transverse rectal folds. Very simple. Rectal folds, yes, rectal folds, they are transverse rectal folds. We have a three, we have two um, uh, on the left and one on the uh, uh, right. So this is the rectal folds. I'm talking about rectal folds. You have uh, one on the right and two on the left. But they are rectal folds. But I'm not talking about flexures. The flexures like opposite. Because of these folds, that means you have, uh, yes, you have one transverse rectal fold on the right. But you have two, two flexures on the right. You have two folds on the left, because there are two folds on the left, but you have just one um, uh, uh, one fold uh, or one flexure on the left. So let us again organize what I'm saying. This is again the left. So this is you look to the rectum from the front and you have mucosal folds. Um, uh, we call them a transverse rectal folds. These transverse rectal folds, you have a three, one on the right and two on the left. They are mucosal folds covering thickening of circular smooth muscle, and that's it. And uh, these uh, folds, uh, as I mentioned, yes, covering the circular smooth muscle. And because of that, you have two flexures created uh, here two on the right and one on the uh, left so you have this one the you have superior and inferior uh, lateral flexure on the other hand you have intermediate uh, flexure on the um, left so the superior and inferior they are concave to the left side right this is the left side from left side you see they are concave here look concave to the left side but this one this one intermediate is concave to the uh, right i mean the concavity toward the right here right you can say it's convex to the left but let us unite it to concave right so it's very simple so these um, let us say uh, these transverse fold indeed somebody can say what's the function of these uh, transverse fold will in day indeed um, it's believed that they uh, exist to delay the passage uh, of this tool and to fragment it right so and also uh, 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 below as we talk about these folds below the last one below this one below the uh, 
uh, transverse fold, you know the rectum now has a dilated part, this dilated part called ampulla of the rectum. So this is one, two, three, so this is the area where we call it ampulla of the uh, rectum. So that was about the uh, uh, lateral flexures and anterior and posterior flexures now, uh, which is very easy. Um, uh, you have to know the relation of the rectum. And in this case, you are looking to the parasagittal view laterally of a male in which the left pelvis um, removed. And you see here is the sigmoid column and here is the uh, rectum. This is my friend's the rectum. I will change the color. So uh, again, this is my friend the uh, rectum in which anterior relation what's located anterior to the rectum indeed look at this pouch because of the reflection of the peritoneum and i think we forgot to explain that look at the reflection of the peritoneum we mentioned that upper part of peritoneum and the, uh, the upper third and uh, uh, middle third of the rectum covered let us add say from the front of the uh, rectum covered by peritoneum so, but we know that the lower third of the rectum is not covered by peritoneum. Anyway, so the peritoneum reflected up on the pace of the urinary bladder and it creates a kind of a pouch. We call it, it's between the rectum and this physical structure we call it urinary bladder. Urinary bladder contains uh, urine. That means it's a physical pouch. It's a physical structure that contains fluid. We call it physical, right? So this pouch is the recto physical pouch between the rectum and urinary bladder. This is number one. So what's in the front of the rectum is the recto physical pouch. Okay, you have also the base of urinary bladder. And look at the vast difference that carries the semen, uh, the sperms from the testis. So at this point, it comes like dilated, what we call it ampulla of the vast difference. Ampulla, not of the rectum, ampulla of the vast difference. This is the vast difference, right? So it's dilated at the end, we call it ampulla of a vast difference. And also, you have the seminal vesicle that creates the fluid of the semen. We'll talk later about it in the UG system. Um, so you have also the seminal vesicle as well. And you have the, if you go a little bit down, what we have in the front of the rectum is the prostate gland. So that's why the prostate gland can be felt. We'll talk about it later. How can we feel the enlargement of prostate gland and similar physical through the rectum, right? PR, PR test, right? You insert the finger from the anal canal and you reach here the rectum. Then you feel it to the front if it's like... Um, uh, 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 let us say uh, if there is an enlargement there right in the prostate gland and what we have also in the front of the rectum you have the terminal part of the ureter the terminal part of ureter so these structures in the male are located anterior to the uh, uh, rectum again uh, you have the uh, uh, rectophysical pouch, you have the vast, the terminal part of vast difference, what we call it, uh, uh, ampulla of vast difference here, and you have the seminal physical, you have the prostate gland, you have the base of urinary bladder, and you have the terminal part of the ureter. So this is um, about the uh, uh, what we call the re anterior relation of the rectum in the male. You remember maybe that the rectovesical pouch contains like the sigmoid colon. This pouch contains the sigmoid colon in the male and female the same. Contains the sigmoid colon and coils of the uh, small intestine and ileum. Right? So in the female now, in the female, again, this is the Sagittal section again of the sigmoid and rectum, my friends. And look at the reflection of the peritoneum that's reflected here between the rectum and what we have here. You have the uterus. And here you have the vagina. So, yes, 
there is a better like the male, but female indeed, you know, has vagina here and the uterus as well. So again, the this reflection of peritoneum from the front of the rectum, upper part of the rectum on the uterus creates a kind of a pouch again between the rectum and uterus. We call it we call it recto uterine pouch recto uterine pouch because between the rectum and uterus recto uterine pouch which is the uh, lowest part we'll talk about it the lowest part uh, in the pelvic cavity which is the location of the accumulation of fluid and infection that's why it's important and they call it pouch of douglas you have to know this name pouch of douglas nobody i think uses a recto uterine pouch they use pouch of douglas when you say pouch of douglas that means yes it's been the rectum and uterus in female that's fine so uh again it contains as i mentioned the sigmoid cone and ileum and also what's related anterior to the uh rectum uh in the female yeah oh yeah you have the vagina but which wall of the vagina let me erase it and show you here again this is the vagina and this is the anterior wall of the vagina and this is the posterior wall of the vagina that's reflected up that means what's related to rectum is the pouch of douglas and the posterior wall of the vagina posterior wall of vagina now the posterior that was about the anterior relation of um, rectum anteriorly um, uh, anteriorly in the male and female now but let us have a look what's going on what's the relation of the um, uh, rectum posteriorly well indeed what's behind the rectum is the sacral bone and it's related muscles nerves and vessels this is simply so bone you have the inferior from because you know the rectum started from ac3 so you have the inferior three sacral vertebrae and the uh, coccyx and also you have a small vessel here which is the median sacral vessel median sacral vessels and that's uh, of course passes there so let us say this is the rectum sorry this is the rectum so median sacral vessels and you have the end fear end of the sympathetic the trunk you know the sympathetic uh, trunk on each side here so this is the nerves and they create a kind of also sacral plexus that comes from the anterior sacral opening this will be covered in details in the uh, UG system and also again here is look at the opening this is anal aperture the opening for the anus and posterior to it because the rectum will be here so posterior to it you have a, a ligament between the anal opening and the sacrum we call it ano um and coccyx sorry we call it ano coccygeal uh, ligament ano coccygeal ligament okay laterally which is uh, very simple this is the uh, again the uh, rectum you see here so laterally it's related to levator ni muscle that forms the pelvic floor and you have coccygeous muscle not shown here but i think it's clear here if say this is the rectum here so laterally you can say but anyway coccygeous anyway located laterally to the rectum and on each side look at the fat here so this is a fossa here which is filled with fat we call it pararectal fossa which is above the pelvic diaphragm take care so the pararectal fossa para that means on each side of that structure pararectal fossa that means a fossa this fossa on each side of the uh, rectum above the pelvic floor filled with fat so this is a pararectal uh, fossa so uh, already i explained that but it's good again to repeat it again and again when you talk about the reflection or the peritoneum in the male and you see here is the um, my friends the rectum and you see in the upper third of the rectum it the peritoneum covers the front and lateral of the rectum right but not posteriorly in the 
middle third of the rectum, the peritoneum just covers the front of the um, rectum, but there is no peritoneum in the lower one third of the rectum. You see, because the peritoneum is reflected on the base of urinary bladder, creates a pouch between the rectum and urinary bladder. We call it rectovesical pouch, okay, which is a side of infection and a fluid collection, right? This is only just one pouch in the male, but in the female, again and again, the same. Um, the upper third uh, covers the front and lateral, but not posterior in the middle third of the rectum, just the peritoneum covers the front of it, and look at it here. The peritoneum reflect from the uh, rectum to the posterior part of the fornix of vagina. This is the vagina, right? This is the vagina, and this is the posterior fornix. This is the posterior corner, posterior fornix of vagina. So it's reflected on the posterior fornix of the vagina, on the posterior wall, and it continues on the uh, rectum. So this pouch we call recto-uterine between the rectum and uterus. Recto-uterine pouch or the pouch of Douglas, which is important. Now, um, here's like um, the peritoneum, like, and the wall between the uh, rectum and vagina. We call it recto-vaginal septum, and it's like thin one. But anyway, the pouch of Douglas uh, located between the bladder and uh, 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 bladder and uh, sorry, the um, uh, recto uterine pouch or pouch of the glass between the rectum and uh, uterus. Now, let us continue with the peritoneum that covers the uterus, and here is again reflected from the uterus to the urinary bladder, which is very simple to the male. In this case, we call it between the uterus and, um, I mean, similar to the male, not because the male has no uterus, but I mean it's reflected back again to the, on the urinary bladder. Anyway, uh, here is the, uh, between the uterus and urinary bladder, we call it, um, we call it visico-uterine pouch. Visico, this pouch is the visico, we call visical structure, I mean urinary bladder, visico-uterine pouch. Anteriorly. That means the female has two pouches, right? Okay. Here is again, give you just a simple uh, uh, idea about the pubic talus muscle and, you know, pelvic floor. This is the what we call it, the pelvic floor formed from the muscle you hear, which is known as levator and eye muscle, three parts. The most medial part in purple color here is the puporic talus muscle. Puporectalis uh, muscle from the uh, attached, it's like U shape as you see here, in which it encircles back to the anal canal. Look at it here, it's like U shape back behind the anal canal at the junction between the rectum and the anal canal. It creates a kind of anal rectal junction. This is the anal rectal junction, in which look at the angle, which is about 80 about 80. It's a play. The puporectalis muscle is important because by this flexure, uh, it creates a kind of um, a major role in the maintaining uh, of uh, uh, fecal continence, right? Preventing like the uh, stool from uh, uh, losing down, right? By this uh, sling that you see uh, here. When you come, my friends, to the um, arterial supply of the uh, rectum, and not just arterial supply, I mean the blood supply of the rectum, including arterial supply and venous drainage and lymphatics as well. So let us start with the, uh, with the arterial supply of the rectum, which is very simple. You have superior, middle, and inferior rectal artery. We mentioned that the rectum divided into three parts, right? Upper one-third, middle one-third, and lower one-third. Anyway, the superior rectal artery you see here, um, uh, in which it is a branch, if you remember, of the inferior mesenteric artery. You remember the inferior mesenteric artery that gives the uh, left colic and the uh, sigmoidal uh, branch, and the, its terminal will be the, uh, uh, superior, the superior rectal artery. This is the superior rectal artery that supplies the proximal, mainly the proximal part of the uh, rectum. Now, 
um, the uh, let us uh, uh, talk about a little bit about the middle rectal artery that was about the superior now the middle rectal artery from both sides that means you have just one superior rectal artery right because it's a continuation of the inferior mesenteric artery now in the when you talk about the middle rectal artery that means you have two middle rectal arteries one on the right and uh, one on the uh, left and they are a branch of internal iliac artery you remember the common iliac artery that gives the internal iliac artery and external iliac artery from the anterior division of the internal iliac artery there is a middle rectal artery on both uh, side that supply the middle part of the rectum and the lower part as well so the middle rectal artery or arteries supply the middle and inferior part of the rectum now what about the inferior rectal artery this is the inferior rectal arteries one on the right and one on the left they are a branch of internal pudendal artery and the internal pudendal artery is also a branch of internal iliac artery that means the middle rectal arteries and in the uh, the inferior rectal arteries ultimately they are a branch of internal iliac artery regardless if it's directly like middle or indirectly through the internal pudendal uh, artery that gives the inferior rectal artery the inferior rectal artery as you see it gives like a small uh, contribution to the lower part of the rectum at the uh, let us say anal rectal uh, junction and it supply the anal canal as you see okay that was about the arterial supply the venous drainage is very close to the um, uh, or it's corresponding to the arteries you remember we have superior middle and inferior artery and also we have the same uh, superior middle and inferior rectal veins the uh, 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 superior rectal vein as you see let me change the color the superior rectal vein i will change it to this the superior rectal vein uh, indeed it uh, carries the uh, blood from the upper part of the rectum or it drains the blood from the upper part of the rectum up and it continues as drain into the uh, inferior mesenteric vein you remember we have the uh, inferior mesenteric artery right here we have inferior mesenteric artery and also we have inferior mesenteric vein this is the inferior mesenteric vein that in which the superior rectal vein it drains the blood there and the inferior mesenteric vein it ascends up then it joins you know the spleen yes you have a splenic vein so the inferior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein then the splenic vein joins the superior mesenteric vein not inferior the superior the splenic vein joins the superior mesenteric vein behind the neck of pancreas to form the portal vein that means the upper part of the rectum the blood from upper part of the rectum it drains into portal circulation then to the liver right but now the uh, look at here now to the middle rectal vein in which it is uh, it drain the blood into internal iliac vein you know we have internal iliac artery and also we have internal iliac vein so the middle rectal vein which is similar to the artery it drains uh, uh, into the internal iliac uh, vein and also uh, the if you see here um, the also the blood from the lower part of the rectum and inner canal here guys also you see drain into inferior rectal vein we'll talk about the anal canal in details but for now this is the internal iliac internal um, rectal vein that it drains into internal budendal vein then internal budendal vein into internal iliac vein and internal iliac vein then it united with external to form the common iliac that means the lower part of rectum here it drains the blood it drains the blood into systemic circulation while the upper part of the rectum drains the blood into portal circulation right 
So the nerve sublow is uh, pretty simple, sympathetic and parasympathetic um, nerve from the inferior hypogastric plexus that's formed there. We'll get more details in the UG system. And what I want to, you guys to know that the rectum is sensitive only to stretch because it's a visceral structure, visceral structure and innervated by visceral nerves, inferior hypogastric plexus. Now the lymphatic drainage, as I say always, the lymphatics in the um, deep structures follow the arteries, and you know that the upper part of the rectum. Uh, 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 it's uh, you know blood supply drains the uh, blood supply into inferior mesenteric um, uh, it the, the blood supply from inferior mesenteric artery right and the lower part of the um, uh, rectum the blood comes from the internal look at the internal iliac artery here right that gives the middle and inferior rectal artery that means the lymphatics drainage will follow the arterial supply that means the upper part of the rectum drains ultimately into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes while the lower part of the rectum it drains the lymphatics into internal iliac lymph nodes which is very typical and similar to the source of blood supply now lastly to the last part of the alimentary tract for what we call it the anal canal we mentioned the uh, this term the anal canal a couple of times when we talked about the rectum so let us uh, identify where this is the anal canal as you see here which is about four centimeter and this is the last uh, part of the alimentary uh, tract or digestive tract and it ends by opening outside uh, for what we call it the anus so again this is the anal canal that starts it started from where you know this is the rectum and the terminal part of the rectum is the rectal ampulla here is the dilated part and we mentioned in the lecture previously that the the rectum ends um, at the uh, one inch at the level of one inch uh, below and anterior to the tip of the coccyx that means let me see if there is we have here something okay so the rectum as we mentioned uh, that it ends just one inch this is not 100 correct one inch uh, below the um say this is the coccyx so one inch anterior and one inch below the tip of the coccyx say here so this is the terminal part of the rectum and at the beginning of the anal canal so this is the beginning of anal canal that means anal canal uh, uh, started from the terminal end of the rectal ampulla and uh, just one inch below the and anterior to the tip of the coccyx. In, indeed, we are describing the terminal end of the rectum and that means it's the same the beginning of anal canal and the anal canal continues and ends as i mentioned at the anus here the opening to the outside laterally if you look this is the anal canal laterally you have this uh, fossa for what we call it ischiorectal fossa ischiorectal fossa this fossa is the uh, ischiorectal uh, fossa okay talk a little bit about the relation of the anal canal and anus uh, for example here in the male and in the female you have uh, you are looking to the you have an inferior you for both male and female here and if you look at it here this is the for example the opening of the anus outside and the opening for the anal canal of course you know so anteriorly in the male it's related to perineal body and also in the female it's related to perineal body and the perineal body in the male is located between the anus and anal canal and the pulp of the penis but in the female it's located between the anus and anal canal and the vagina right so posteriorly it's similar in the male and female in which uh, it's related to the posterior to the anococcygeal ligament anococcygeal ligament from the from that circuit here and the circuit posterior in the uh, coccyx okay now 
back again to the anal um, uh, canal here in which in this figure you are looking to the coronal section you remove the anterior part of the rectum and you look into the um, uh, to it like um, uh, in a frontal uh, view so again this is the rectum and this is the anal canal well guys you can draw the anal canal like as this so we can divide it into two halves the upper half and the lower half why we divided it in two halves yes we mentioned that the anal canal started from the rectal uh, ampulla here that means this is the upper half of anal canal why we divide the anal canal itself in two halves upper and lower because the upper half of anal canal originates uh, I, i'm talking about the embryology right embryologically it originates from the similar origin of rectum and the uh, gi tract that means it originates from the endoderm from the endoderm that means the uh, origination the tissue uh, the mucosa i mean and the blood supply and the innervation and the origin and the lymphatic drainage and venous drainage everything which is very similar to the rectum and gi tract while the lower half of anal canal originates from ectoderm from ecto Derm, that means the uh, 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 tissue, the mucosa, the histology of the mucosa here, the blood supply, the venous drainage, the innervation, the lymphatic drainage, very similar to the skin and area outside, right? That's why we divide it in this way. Let me erase it again and still, uh, guys. Um, let us start with the upper half of anal canal. This is the upper half of anal canal that originates from the endoderm, which is um, uh, similar to that uh, uh, lining of the rectum. That means uh, simple columnar uh, cells. Anyway, so if you look at it, you will see that it has a kind of longitudinal folds. These folds, we call them the anal columns anal columns between these columns you have like sinuses because of the existence of these columns we created a kind of not anal columns now you have anal uh, sinuses these um uh you see um the uh these sinuses fills the gap between columns and indeed they united inferiorly to form like teeth of the comp we call it bictinate line so this is the bictinate line the bictinate line is not only the border between the upper half and lower half of anal canal and it's not just the uh, location between the uh, uh, transition of uh, embryological difference between the upper half and lower half but also it indicates the uh, uh, the uh, area where is the upper half of anal canal up and the lower half of anal canal below and everything will be different histologically uh, blood supply innervation lymphatic drainage and so forth and uh, so uh, most importantly that the bictinate line not as we mentioned just uh, earlier but also it's the location of the um, the location of the anal membrane that means here is an membrane should be here and normally uh, should be ruptured right it uh, divides the anal canal into upper half and lower half so it's the border we call it anal membrane which is very easy to remember if you need to know more about the embryology of the anal canal you can watch the lecture of the um, Imperiology of hind gut. It's on the YouTube uh, channel. Now, look at the uh, this area is the uh, location of the anal membrane that comes from the cloaca, right? But normally should be this membrane should be degenerated and open. So that means the upper half of anal canal and lower half of anal canal will be uh, continue now and open to each other so this is another story but let us get back again to the 
uh, lower half of anal canal. This is the from here from pectinate line um, and down to this line is the lower half of anal canal. So the lower half of anal canal we call it also anal pectin. Anal we call it anal pectin, which is another name for instead of say lower half of anal canal, you say you can say anal pectin, which is a transitional zone. Why? Because uh, 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 from this point for what we call it white line not pectinate line no white line because this is the lower half of anal canal from this point we call it white line or any cutaneous line the uh, 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 the lining of anal canal now becomes true skin that means back again to the upper half in the upper half of anal canal here is the histology or the mucosa was similar to the rectum. That means simple columnar. Now, in the lower half of anal canal here, the it is non-keratinized, non-keratinized, stratified sequamous epithelium. That means here is stratified sequamous, but it is non-keratinized. But when you jump from this line, white line, now it is a true skin. This area from white line and below, it is a true skin, similar to this. So it is not stratified sequamous, just it is keratinized. You have to remove this. So it is keratinized stratified sequamous epithelium. Now, uh, let us uh, let me remind you guys. If you uh, don't watch the um, lecture of the embryology, the embryology of the hindgut, why this is the upper half of anal canal and this is the lower half of anal canal, right? So the upper the upper part of anal canal, uh, originally it comes, the histology of it, it's, it comes from endoderm. That means similar to the rectum and the blood supply for it will be similar to the rectum. That means it's supplied by superior rectal artery, which is a branch of what? Branch of inferior mesenteric artery. Inferior mesenteric artery. That means, this is a blood supply, that means the venous drainage will follow the artery. That means the venous drainage of the upper part of anal canal will be by superior rectal vein, in which the superior rectal vein, as I mentioned earlier in this lecture in the rectum, it goes up and continue as inferior mesenteric vein, it drains into inferior mesenteric vein, then the inferior mesenteric vein unite, uh, drains into splenic vein. The splenic vein united with superior mesenteric to gives the to give sorry the portal vein, the portal vein to the liver. That means the venous drainage of the upper half of anal canal will be to the portal circulation to the portal circulation. Again, let me repeat it: the blood supply, superior rectal artery, and venous drainage, superior rectal vein. The same is superior rectal artery and superior rectal vein. Superior rectal vein drains the blood into inferior mesenteric vein. Inferior mesenteric vein it drains the blood also from the rectum and sigmoid, and go it goes up and jo it joins the splenic or drains into splenic vein. You know, there's a spleen and splenic vein. Then the splenic vein. Forget that. Now, splenic vein joins the the superior mesenteric vein, not inferior, no, superior mesenteric, behind the neck of pancreas and form the portal vein. Portal vein now drains into the liver. That means this is the portal circulation. That means the drainage of the upper part of the anal canal through the portal circulation. While in the lower half of anal canal, would that comes histologically it comes um, from the ectoderm it's supplied by middle rectal artery and inferior rectal artery and the inf middle and inferior rectal artery they are branch of internal iliac artery right although the inferior rectal artery it comes first from internal budendal artery then the internal budendal artery it's a branch of internal iliac that means and ultimately they are branch from internal iliac artery right this is number two. That means the blood supply is different. And uh, the venous drainage will be 
to the internal iliac vein right that means to the systemic circulation not to the portal circulation circulation that means the venous drainage the venous drainage of lower half of anal canal drains is to systemic circulation because internal iliac drains into um, uh, of course joins the external iliac and then to the common iliac and to systemic circulation of course right this is about blood supply and venous drainage and if you want to if uh, guys uh, because we are talking about blood supply let us jump now to the lymphatic drainage Lymph lymphatic drainage follow the same blood supply that means you know that the blood supply to the upper part of anal canal comes from superior rectal artery superior rectal artery is a branch of inferior mesenteric artery that means close to the inferior mesenteric artery you have um, close to the inferior mesenteric artery you have inferior mesenteric lymph nodes that means the um, that means the lymphatic drainage uh, from the upper half of anal canal will be through the to the lymphatic drainage here that known as inferior mesenteric lymph node now the lower half of anal um, canal it drains uh, 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 into superficial inguinal lymph nodes into superficial inguinal lymph nodes that means completely outside and different right now the innervation the let me erase these things and the innervation of the upper half and lower half of inner canal the upper half of inner canal you know it originates from endoderm and that means it um, follows the rules of visceral structures. That means it innervated by autonomic nerves, autonomic hypogastric plexus. That means when it's because the upper half above the pectinate line, that means because it's innervated by autonomic nervous system, that means um, it's uh, sensitive just only to uh, just only to what to stretch right it's just sensitive to stretch while the lower half of anal canal that originates from um, that originates from the um, ectoderm so it's similar to the skin and it's innervated by somatic nerves inferior rectal nerve right not autonomic inferior rectal uh, nerve and in this case uh, it is very sensitive to skin. Uh, it's very typical, uh, similar to skin. That means it's sensitive to pain, temperature, touch, and the pressure, right? And here is, guys, uh, if you look at it here again, so this is the upper half of anal canal with anal columns, and uh, between them is the anal sinuses, and here is the anal valve, in which we call it in a uh, bictinate line and below it you have the lower half of anal canal the lower half of anal canal guys you see here uh, anal pectin we call it and um, we mentioned um, everything uh, I think uh, uh, about the innervation blood supply and uh, origin as well the anal canal guarded by uh, sphincters we call them anal sphincters and uh, indeed we have internal one and external one so the internal anal sphincter you see here you remember the rectum let me show you the again back what we discussed earlier i showed you if you remember this uh, image you remember that and we talked about the external longitudinal the tenacoli that then spreads to form the outer longitudinal muscle as you see here but deep to it you have these circular muscle so these circular muscle you see here is for its involuntary and yes it's in the rectum and also it continues all the way down around the upper uh, three-fourth of the anal canal let me show you here back what we um what we have here so where is that okay okay here is the um uh, i'm gonna talk about now the internal anal uh, sphincter as i mentioned which is the inner involuntary circular muscle layer 
of the inner canal you remember as i showed you in the previous um, figure in the rectum in which there is inner circular uh, uh, smooth muscle which is most importantly it's involuntary that means it's innervated by autonomic nervous system that means it's out of our uh, control right uh, in which uh, pelvic splanchnic um, uh, and uh, inferior hypogastric uh, nerves. So these uh, uh, inner circular muscle, you know, this is the inner canal, this is the upper part of the inner canal, and this is the lower half of the inner canal. So the inner circular muscle that forms the internal inner sphincter, uh, you know, guarded or controls the uh, inner canal all the way until it reached the white line or Hilton's line white line or Hilton's line we call it also inicutaneous uh, inicutaneous line right that means the lower part here which is close to the anus um, has no internal inner sphincter just keep in your mind but it's replaced by external one right so this is about the internal inner sphincter in which we have no control over it. We have no control over it. But uh, to you, you mean uh, uh, prevent the uh, 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 abdomen gases or feces from getting out when there is uh, pressure in the rectum up. But indeed, we have something to control it, and we have co um, control over it. That you know, we have a skeletal uh, striated voluntary uh, muscles. You see here where they are indeed voluntary uh, uh, muscles in which uh, they are innervated by somatic uh, nerves, and indeed they are skeletal muscles. So you have the three bands as you see here. You have one here close to the skin, and you have another one here, and you have one deep here. So the most superficial one just deep to the skin. When you open just the skin, you will find it there uh, around the anus. We call it the subcutaneous part. This is the all of the three muscles here. They form the external anal sphincter, the external anal sphincter you remember here is the internal and we have external the external formed by skeletal muscles they are voluntary they are striated muscles so we have the innervated by somatic nerve there are three parts the first one just under the skin which is superficial we call it the subcutaneous part right it has no bone attachment it doesn't attach to bone now just deep to it uh, uh, which is around say the uh, uh, lower half of inner canal we have here the superficial part and the deep to it you have the deep uh, part that means you have subcutaneous part you have superficial and deep um, parts the uh, superficial part is the only one that's connected to bone right through which here for example if you look at it here uh, here is the superficial one attached anterior to the perineal body and posteriorly uh, to the uh, coccyx through the anal coccygeal uh, body. Anyway, it's just to know that just the superficial one is connected to the um, uh, has bony attachment. Anyway, let me explain it again for you, the sphincters of the anal canal. This is again the rectum, right? So you are looking to the whole tube of the anal canal and this is the upper part of the rectum and we mentioned earlier in this lecture that the uh, border between or the area where is the rectum continues as anal canal is this area where we call it anorectal flexure or anorectal junction and this anorectal flexure created by a muscle which is like U shape that creates a kind of a sling uh, around that area between the rectum and inner canal, we call it bubo rectalis. Bubo rectalis. We talked about it. You can watch the uh, uh, this lecture area. Anyway, so and you have the internal inner sphincter and external inner sphincter. Where is the internal inner sphincter? Yes, this is the rectum, and you know that the rectum composed from uh, outside longitudinal muscle, not shown here, and inner circular. So this is the inner circular um, uh, smooth muscle that encircles not just the rectum but also the anal canal all the way to except the lower part which is the um, up to the uh, anal area or white 
um, uh, let us say white line or white uh, yes white line or Hilton's line or uh, or what we call it also sometime the inequitaneous line anyway this is the internal what about the external the external is these brown muscles you know just under the skin this is the anus opening so there's a skin here so just the external inner sphincter that we have control over it yeah uh, there are three parts subcutaneous one superficial and deep one of course now so we talked about the internal anal sphincter that we have no control over it and the external anal sphincter composed from uh, three parts now also you remember from the figure of the rectum that i showed you that yes the muscles you remember the tina coli as i mentioned that then at the rectum it spreads to form the outer longitudinal the outer longitudinal muscle so it exists here but it's not shown in this figure it's between the internal and the external anal sphincter so it should be here and uh, here it's also it helps also um in that in the control and guarding the anal canal of course again uh, we cannot ignore the important function of puporectalis. That means you have internal anal sphincter, external anal sphincter, and you have the longitudinal muscle, and you have the puporectalis that forms a sling. Of course, let us jump here. Let me show you the external anal sphincter. This is the subcutaneous one, which is under the skin, and here is the superficial one that has puny attachment you know you know what i mean and you have the deep one the deepest part this is in the external anal uh, sphincter that have we control over it but before um uh, uh, uh jump uh to the blood supply or something like that let me uh, uh explain one thing to you which is something called anorectal ring. Ano, ano, rectal ring. What's this ring? What? This is the rectum. This is the anal canal. Where is the ring? You see, we have three parts. The deep part of the external anal sphincter and the pupo rectalis and you see this black color the smooth uh, muscle that forms the internal anal sphincter yes we we i mentioned that the, in, the internal anal sphincter the internal anal sphincter formed by this smooth muscle right so these three parts the deep part of external anal sphincter and puporectalis and the internal anal sphincter they form a ring we call it anorectal ring which is very important in the control of the fecal continence that means in a key in, in a way or another if there is an injury uh, for example during a surgery or during a episiotomy or um, by mistake if there is uh, a rupture or a tear in the deep uh, pubic talus and smooth muscle that means you will get fecal incontinence you cannot control the feces from getting out so these are very important right okay so uh here is again another uh figure show you the internal anal sphincter that's formed by smooth muscle and you have the external longitudinal muscle that helps as well and away from internal anal sphincter that formed from smooth muscle there is external anal sphincter with three parts subcutaneous superficial and uh, deep and this uh, vitro and i should be here the puporectalis 
uh, shift back again to uh, talk about the the internal and external hemorrhoids and to understand the external and internal hemorrhoids we have to understand the blood supply and the venous drainage which is most importantly and I think from the beginning at the beginning of the lecture we um, uh, mentioned that the uh, superior rectal artery which is the uh, uh, chief artery that supply the uh, rectum which is a branch from the uh, uh, inferior mesenteric artery if you remember let me choose the, this canal you remember the inferior mesenteric artery the, you know the terminal end of the inferior of the inferior mesenteric artery is the superior rectal artery that supplies the upper and middle part of the um, rectum plus um, yeah, it's in it supplies the upper half of anal canal right now uh, it's good to mention here that the superior rectal artery at the level of s3 that means at the uh, say level of the junction between at uh, the junction between the uh, rectum uh, between the sigmoid and rectum that means at the beginning of the rectum here is the superior rectal artery divided into right and left branch and then the right branch divided into anterior branch and posterior branch that means you have at the level of s3 the superior rectal artery that means at s3 that means at the beginning of the rectum the superior rectal artery divided into right and left branch then the right branch divided again into anterior and posterior uh, branch so keep this in your mind why because the venous drainage i mean the superior rectal vein follows the same uh, the same uh, path so that means here again we reach the uh, superior rectal vein so these are the tributaries of the superior rectal vein which is indeed arranged in the similar manner to that of the uh, superior rectal artery and you don't have to be surprised if you get internal hemorrhoids in hemorrhoids that means in arabic البواصير hemorrhoids here البواصير so you don't be surprised if you uh, find internal hemorrhoids at this area that means what you have here you have uh, two veins on the right because we mentioned that this is the right this is superior rectal vein and this is right and this is the left one the right has two tributaries right the anterior and posterior and right that means you have two on the right and one on the left okay before jumping to the uh, before jumping to the hemorrhoids and what does it mean what we mentioned um it's good to remind you my friends that this is the inferior mesenteric um uh, vein and this is the superior uh, rectal vein and the superior rectal vein it has a tributaries as i mentioned you have the right one with the uh, anterior and posterior one and you have the uh, left one so the uh, superior rectal vein with the tributaries it drains the blood from the upper half of anal canal while the lower half of anal canal it drains the uh, blood through the inferior rectal vein right that means as we mentioned earlier the inferior half of anal canal drains into systemic circulation into ultimately internal iliac vein right i know internal uh, the inferior rectal uh, vein drains into bugendal vein then a bugendal vein to internal iliac and ultimately the internal iliac united with the external iliac to form common iliac anyway that means the blood from lower half of anal canal will be drained into systemic circulation while the blood from upper half of anal canal drains into portal circulation as i mentioned earlier in this lecture that means uh, uh, another uh, you know we have many places in which the systemic and the um, uh, portal circulation united with each or make an stomosis there is connection so at this area look at this area which is 
um, uh, uh, look at these plexuses here, which is a connection between the um, between let us say the systemic uh, circulation and portal circulation. It is at the located. If this is the pectinate line, so they are in the upper half of anal canal. We call them internal rectal plexus. While also you have another plexus outside, which is out of the musculature of the anal canal, outside under the skin here, they are external rectal plexus. Not internal rectal plexus, external rectal plexus. Although they are outside the rectum and the way they should, some, somebody can say they we have to call them external anal plexus but i don't know it doesn't the terms like uh doesn't indicate uh what does it does mean but anyway we call them external rectal plexus so um hemorrhoids can occur uh can occur anywhere can these plexuses or in any tributaries of the um uh, uh veins so let us start with the internal hemorrhoids or what we call it uh, piles يعني البواصير الداخلية so you remember the again the superior rectal vein here right and you remember also because they uh, it follows the path of the superior rectal artery in which you have the right here and left here tributary and the right formed by two Post anterior and posterior one, right? The anterior and posterior tributary form the right, and here is on the left you have left tributary. They united to form superior rectal vein. That means if you follow them, if you look uh, here, let us say uh, through protoscope through the anus, and you look to the rectum here. Of course, we are we are talking when you say internal hemorrhoids. That means above the pectinate line, above this line, right? In the upper half of anal canal, right? Because we know that the superior rectal vein, it drains the upper half of anal canal. That means when you look inside, you will find like hemorrhoids or dilatations of veins. And, you know, in the, in the anal canal, we call them hemorrhoids. In the esophagus, for example, we call them esophageal varices esophageal varices in the lower limb for example we call them varicose pain right different terms it depends where is the dilatation where it, uh, where is the uh, varic where, where where is the dilated vein uh, uh, located anyway in the anal canal we call them hemorrhoids right so the internal hemorrhoids, when you look through the protoscope with a patient in lithotomy position, you will find dilated veins or you expect to find hemorrhoids or dilated vein at the level of clock number 7, clock um, uh, 11, and at 3 o'clock, at these 3, 3, 7, and 11. You know why? Because you are looking from inferior, right? There is somebody in lithotomy position and you look through the anus and if you remember this you remember this right tributary divided into anterior and posterior so this one the anterior one which is number 11 and the posterior one which is number seven uh, this is the right and the left you have just one which is this one located at the position of three o'clock that means three seven and uh, 11 now because you know again this is the internal um, uh, uh, internal rectal plexus and this is internal hemorrhoids above the pectinate line and you know what above the pectinate line the internal half of the upper half of anal canal the upper half of anal canal here uh, where is the internal hemorrhoids located uh, it's originated from endoderm. That means it's innervated by autonomic nervous system. That means it is sensitive only just to stretch. That means you will get like pain um, from internal hemorrhoids in case if there is a stretch to that area, like in case of constipation, right? And most common sign of internal hemorrhoids is the bleeding. Sometimes you don't know that you have 
um, these kind of um, uh, hemorrhoids, except you have a kind of egg and pain or a kind of um, uh, uh, like after defecation, you get like uh, fresh blood coming out from there. And it's painful just in case you have constipation because there is be stretch. The autonomic nerve, the autonomic or the viscera here, because these structures are innervated by autonomic nerves, essentially just to stretch, like in case of constipation. Right, this is the internal hemorrhoids. Now, the external hemorrhoids, uh, usually it's um, outside, pulsed outside. We don't care now about the degree, if the first, second, third, fourth degree, this is something related to the clinical. And anyway, to external hemorrhoids located outside in the lower half of anal canal, this is the pectinate line. So this is the location of external hemorrhoids. As you see here, this is a venous. Uh, this is the in, um, external um, uh, external ectalic plexus, and you see here, which is a location for um, uh, hemorrhoids. We call them external hemorrhoids, and because they are from the uh, surface of the anus and lower half of anal canal and you know the lower half of anal canal which is uh, innervated by somatic nerve somatic nerve that means it's innervated by inferior external nerve indeed which is somatic nerve that means it's sensitive to pain temperature touch and the pressure you cannot sit on the chair right because of the pressure sensitive to uh, so pain temperature uh, and when you touch it it's really so painful and um, uh, uh, painful because it's innervated by somatic nerve, the inferior rectal nerve, which is similar to the pain of the, uh, the skin, right? That's, uh, that was about the uh, anatomy of the rectum and uh, anal canal. Thank you for listening and uh, hope you find value in it. Thank you. These are our references. Thank you.